Joining us now is Congressman Eric Swalwell of California. He's on both the Intelligence Committee and the Judiciary Committee. Congressman, it's really nice to have you here tonight. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you, Rachel. Thanks for having me back. I, I want to ask you first about, um, just actually just about the shutdown. I don't know if you have any insights for us or any predictions for us about how and when finally going to end. I, I don't know if you can tell if the end is coming. Boy, I, I hope it's coming. Uh, before the show, I was serving meals uh, to federal workers uh, at the World Central Kitchen uh, with Jose Andres' team, and it was very hard to see, you know, FBI police officers in uniform uh, coming in uh, for meals, uh, mothers bringing uh, their kids. And it was also federal workers volunteering to serve other federal workers, uh, showing solidarity uh, with their colleagues. And they just want us to open up government. I heard time after time, whatever the politics is here, can you at least just open up government and then uh, negotiate what has to be done for border security? We've seen um, an interesting, uh, I think, sort of collapse of what is the usual partisan divide in Congress, specifically on this issue of Russian sanctions over the past few days. We saw 11 Republican senators peel off from their leadership and from the Trump White House and the Senate. We saw 136 Republicans today in the House uh, peel off from the, the Trump White House and, and, and join Democrats to try to stop the Trump administration from lifting Russian sanctions associated with Oleg Deripaska. I know that the shutdown and the sanctions issue are different things, but I, I wondered if that kind of Fisher, that kind of fracturing of our usual partisan expectations uh, gives you some hope. Well, it does. It also shows and demonstrates that there's bipartisan consensus uh, in, in both chambers, over 400 members between both chambers, that believe that this is a bad move uh, for our national security and also recognizes that sanctions are a tactic to change behavior, and uh, Russia hasn't changed its behavior. Uh, former Secretary of Defense uh, James Mattis said that they actually sought to interfere in the 2018 election just as they were in the 2016 election. So why would we be rewarding them? I, and I'll just say this, Rachel, if you're looking at a quid pro quo, I think you can file this under the quo, more quo evidence between Trump and Russia. And it's actually dramatically sped up since that Helsinki uh, meeting where we don't know what was said, where the interpreter's notes have been taken by the president. Since that meeting with Vladimir Putin, President Trump has now uh, sought to ease sanctions. He's pulled us abruptly out of Syria. And he now, we've learned from reporting, uh, has time after time talked about pulling us out of NATO. And just today, as Speaker Pelosi was going to Brussels to meet with NATO leadership, he cancels her trip, which may be a petty move uh, in light of what's going on uh, with the shutdown on his part, but may also be, uh, I think, his insecurity about demonstrating support uh, for NATO. On, on that specific vote in Congress, too, I'm also struck by the fact that we've had a, a whole bunch of revelations and hard questions raised specifically about Deripaska while the Trump administration is lifting, lifting sanctions specifically on his companies. I mean, we just got that somewhat inadvertent revelation that Manafort was sharing polling data from inside the campaign with his intermediary with Deripaska, who's a guy associated with Russian intelligence. Deripaska, of course, is the guy who Manafort was offering private briefings to. There's this disturbing case of this Belarusian woman who just got out of prison, uh, saying after having said that she had uh, damning evidence linking Oleg Deripaska to the Russian election interference effort. She had apparently been given assurances that she would be left alone by Russia and allowed to go home. Russia then picked her up at the Moscow airport today, and she hasn't been heard from since. I mean, all of these things are sort of Deripaska adjacent while the administration is moving to ease sanctions specifically related to him. Yeah. There are only open questions about Deripaska, and there, there's none that have been uh, closed. We know that the Mueller investigation is still open, that the line of inquiry into Paul Manafort is still open. His sentencing hasn't occurred, and Manafort had a direct line of co communication to Deripaska. There's classified information about Deripaska uh, as well, and that Mr. Schiff, uh, our chairman, talked about, uh, not the classified information, but the existence of it uh, on the floor uh, today. You know he's connected to Vladimir Putin. I think the most responsible thing to do would be if there's ever going to be a discussion about easing sanctions against Russia, have that conversation, have that discussion after the Mueller investigation is closed. Congressman Eric Swalwell from the Intelligence Committee, the Judiciary Committee. Sir, thank you very much. It's good to have you here. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back. Stay with us.